people uh, invited talk by our respected Dr. Selvamurthy sir on yoga for everyone the scientific perspective. I request uh, Professor Madan Mohanji, the director of CITER and the one who has enabled so many things to happen to say a few words of introduction to those who are coming late and <coughs> introduce Selvamurthy sir and welcome him for the guest lecture. Today in our special day, we had a memorandum of understanding between the MIT University, very famous university in Noida, and, uh, and uh, Balaji with their feet, both in the service, in the a great knack, and uh, uh, Dr. Salimurti is there, he is the Chancellor of MIT University, Chhattisgarh, and in the Noida University, UP, uh, this, uh, MIT. He is also holding many very important uh, posts, more than one. And Dr. Salimurti is a distinguished physiologist and a highly distinguished yogi. And you see the JSC also. And he is a physiologist and a yogi. And he was the chief controller of uh, So, uh, I know him for uh, more than three, four decades. And uh, he has done a fundamental, very important work in yoga, physiology also. And uh, so I welcome him, I look all the way. Thank you very much. Mr. Dr. Sethu Raman, the Vice Chancellor, Dr. Ananda, my friend, and also your long yoga partner. <laughs> Dr. Professor uh, Madan Mohan, and also very distinguished faculties, doctors, clinicians, students, and friends. It gives me extreme happiness, immense pressure <coughs> to be here, and a very joyful moment for me to be here in this Malaji Vidyapit. At this university, I have seen and I have known since I used to visit Pandichi earlier very often and particularly Dr. Swami Gitananda, father of Dr. Ananda. I have been blessed by him and uh, so now Dr. Ananda and Mr. Madan Mohan, they have been spearheading yoga in this particular area and Jimpal Pandichi and <coughs> Mr. Madan Mohan has been a leader not only in India, but at a global level, he has contributed to the field of yoga. And I'm happy that Dr. Ananda is propagating, continuing bearing the torch of his father, Dr. Swami Ananda, along with Amaji, as his mother, Sri Ramadhi Baba, Bhavaniji, so whom I have again had the opportunity of meeting her in Vidyan Baba just about a couple of months ago when she had come there for the International Yoga Day. She was June. She was there along with Dr. Ananda. So I'm extremely happy today we decided a movie, Memorandum of Understanding, between <coughs> this great institution, the Maharaj Vidya Beat, along with our Amity University. And to tell you a little bit about Amity University, it's one of the young, exponentially growing, dynamic, uh, the educational group of institutions, right from preschools, schools, universities, which gives an opportunity for a person to enter like a pre-nursery into law and then get out as a postdoc. So we have the whole chain of education, a group of institutions in Amici. I am happy to be part of this. Dr. Ashok K. Chauhan, who is a visionary, who built this institution. He himself is a scientist, yoga, yoga practitioner, and also Ari Samaj. He belongs to Ari Samaj, very active now. And he was also a student like you people sitting, studying his master's in chemistry. Then he went to Germany for a PhD in, uh, in the chemical engineering in Germany with a fellowship. So then he became a chief of an R&D. He owned an industry. He owned a group of industries. He became an entrepreneur. Every 15 kilometers in Germany, he used to have one industry of his, Ashok Chauhan. 
Then after 28 years in Germany, he decided to come back. He was for society and development. Through education, research, and innovation, and philanthropy. So such a great person, I'm happy to work with. And I'm sure that one day he will visit this university. And he has sent his greetings and best wishes for the success of our program. <clears throat> so I'm so happy to be here as a part of a meeting at a group of institutions. Now with this preamble, let me uh, also express my appreciation to uh, the Vice Chancellor who will bring such wonderful minds here. I'm going to learn from you, <clears throat> not only share some of my research experience in the field of yoga, what I have been doing in the experiments and experiential learning, as I've been practicing yoga for the past 40 years now. So not only experiential learning and experimental learning, together I'm going to share some thoughts, experiences with you, and also take your wisdom for input for the rest of my career in the field of yoga. What is our strength today? Why every, every, every nation is looking towards India? It's because of many things. India is a place of wisdom. India is a place of knowledge. We have a knowledge superpower. We have Veda, Parishad, Bhagavad Gita, Yoga, Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani. All this existed in our country where there was no civilization elsewhere. Men, there was no civilization. People were living in jungle with no clothes on them. That thing we have down this which is Veda, Supervision. So our country was a knowledge superpower. We were having, we were radiating on it. People were coming to Nalanda University. Uh, we had the first university in the world, Dakshila. So we had many first we invented zeros, we invented uh, pie charts and also the theorem. Many things came from even Einstein said, but for Indians. We would not have been able to talk to uh, beyond 100. <laughs> <laughs> that is the kind of things people respect. And many things other people learn from other Vedas and Vedas Noble values. In fact, the Noble values idea came from our ancient literature. So that is our country. That is our country. And so in this country, yoga was from the wisdom. More than 5,000 years ago, yoga started in our country. So if we have been able to give it to the society at global level. It is yoga. It is yoga. It is being done in many centers abroad, many centers in India. So uh, that is why the United Nations, recognizing that potential, they recognize yoga and then made it 21st June should be the International Day of Yoga. Like we have many days, but International Days of Yoga is very important. So that shows the values, the whole humanity, the whole globe attaches to yoga. And the strength of our country is the human resource. All of, it, all of us are the human resource, the biggest asset of our nation. So how we can help, how we, we become lighthouse for the whole world to do, can we do yoga? So that is why this, is, this lecture is important. And this is important that we have, uh, it's going to be one point, 8, 8 million. Now we are to 1.25 by about 2035 in the country is level. Then the second is we have the demographic advantage. That is the, we are the youngest, youngest nation. And we have now almost 50% of people below the age of 55 years. Most creative, productive, constructive, innovative, creative phase of one's life is that. So we have that population here. So that is the other advantage. Uh, then we also have uh, the other thing is we have the natural resources. You name any climate, somebody you want to have a temperate climate, go to Ladakh, you have this temperature. If you want to see a desert, go to Pakistan. If you want a perishable condition, go to the east, northeast. And then so we have all hot humid, warm humid, temperate, everything subtropical, everything is alive. Which country has got that? At the same time of the year, you have all seasons. Rich biodiversity. See, biodiversity, both the uh, fauna, fauna, flora, medicine, medicines, all these are available. So the next is biodiversity, very rich biodiversity. We have Northeast, Bio Hotspot, we have Western Gods here in South, Western Gods in the world. So that is the potential. We have natural resources, we have human resources, we are the largest milk producer in the world. 
We are top three in agriculture produce, whether it's vegetable, horticulture, or it is uh, it is the foods, name anything, we are top five. So then, how do we harness these human potentials and go back? So the whole world is looking at how India can contribute to humanity development. Thus, not only really wealth development, the development includes spiritual development. That is where the, our country will have an age. Other people may have physical wealth, monetary, economic wealth, but they may have also mental, intellectual wealth. They may have so many people, colorized, distinguished researchers, and so on. But in the wealth which we have, the spiritual, which is going to be the winning factor in this in this particular century. The winning factor is we have a combination of all this physical, mental, and spiritual powers we have. So that is why. How do we awaken the spiritual powers? How do we awaken the mental potentials through yoga? How do you keep yourself health, health physically? Yoga can create that. So this 1.2 billion, 2.5 billion people can be transformed into a global asset, global asset by providing this holistic the health and well-being and the potential realization of yoga. So that is why the whole globe is looking towards so India will become the lighthouse of yogi science. Yoga is a science. Yoga people feel is a myth or its philosophy or its psychology. It's actually science. If you do every asana, there is not a meaning. Even if it's just one component of yoga, yoga is not really asana. Yoga is no ashtanga yoga includes yama yama, asana, pranayama, pratyaha, dharma, yana, samadhi. All the eight limbs are yoga. So yoga is the way of life rather than practicing, I practice yoga. That means I practice half an hour So it's not practicing yoga. You have to meet yogi way of life. So that is, then you are practicing yoga. Otherwise you can say I am practicing asanas. So that is why there is a difference. So yoga, uh, if you do that, it's a science. What do you want to say is how is the science are going to come? Do the science. If you do, like for example, some yoga mudra, for example, or ujjangasana, jagurasana, surya maskara, when you do this, flexion, extension, muscular, musculoskeletal, neural, neural, all this stimulation occurs, proprioceptive receptors, and the cardiovascular receptors, or the battle effects, everything gets activated when you do those. So it's a science. Why did they develop these the asanas? is based on a science. Similarly, when you do Ujjayi Pranayama, Vastrita, Kapalgati, it is all science. When you do this, you take a deep inhalation, hold the breath, exhalation. What is the science behind this? When you take deep inhalation, you are filling the whole of your vital capacity, the maximum air that you can hold it. Then why are you holding the breath, that Kumbha phase? Why are they having this? Kumbha phase is, one is to allow the carbon dioxide to accumulate to the tissue level and so that the peripheral circulation, microcirculation at tissue level improves because of this CO2, it changes carbonic acid. So this acid which happens at the tissue level, it actually opens up the pre features and causes improved microcirculation in vital organs. So in that phase, then you are throwing that carbon dioxide which you have circulated by gradually, continuously exhaling the air. So, science, it's a science. So, you have really awesome, you have really pranayam, the meditative practice. Now, I'm going to do science. That's what I'm going to do with this. How we do science? So, just to show you a chart, you know, a tip of the iceberg. This is what I'm going to do with this. And many people are coming to India for seeking your knowledge here. So, we have tourism. Many people come to and they have a very big website, it's very active, and they have a journal. So I see right that many institutions are doing this. So people are coming to seek the yogic knowledge here. So tourism for healing and rejuvenation. So it is not only for disease people, it's not only for patients. It's for normal people like us who want to be healthy, happy, and to the best of their ability to lead every moment of life in the you need to have yoga. Yoga wants you have this Every moment is a happiness, a moment of happiness. 
So there are yoga study centers is available in our, in our country, the big way, more than 800 centers, veterinary centers are available today. There are many which I don't want to mention, but particularly here, in this place, you have uh, at Swam Itananda established their centers and yoga center, which I used to come and enjoy the bhajans and without he used to radiate happiness around and also the spiritual radiation uh, used to happen at so many times. So we have this class of Nidam. Now what is yoga? Yoga means to yoke. Yoke. It's a Sanskrit word. It means to bring harmony, to join together, to yoke. That is the meaning of yoga. It started from this. So we have physiologists. They like to interpret the meaning of body and mind, because the physiologists understand that. And then, or somebody will say, self is universal self. This is spiritual people will say, I am part of the whole. I am part of the whole. So, self is a universal self. And then go. That means go breaks that. Then, you can bring a Jiva Atma with Paramatma. So, Jiva Atma, Paramatma, and Jiva Atma. We, we came from there and we want to unite. The aim is our origin. So, Jivatma and uh, Paramatma unification is also an ego. So, yoga means you can interpret depending on what you want and what you want to interpret. And this 5,000 years ago, it is uh, in India, but Patanjali was the father of yoga sutras. So, he compared all the knowledge of yoga and then brought out the yoga sutras together. Uh, talk about this. So the first part of yoga is to have the physical, the physical part, mental part, and spiritual well-being. So gradually you want to achieve this. The first part you want to be physically healthy. A diseased person to focus and look for realization. Suppose I have all the time a low back pain, cerebral pain, or pain in the mind. mind. You cannot achieve a higher level of consciousness. So the first level of being preparing yourself to increase your consciousness is to keep your health already. So be healthy. So the physical part comes in. Then mental, you can't dissociate mind and body. So you are, your mind, many diseases come from mind, not from body. So mental is a symptom in the body. That can be the problem of majority is in your mind. So that's why right. physical, mental, and the spiritual will be. Because as I said, we are not human beings looking for this uh, spiritual experience, but they actually, they actually spiritual being people come to this world to see what a human experience. <laughs> remember, the whole problem is finished. Once you realize you are spirit, you are you are actually a uh, you, you are a spirit from this body. Today this spirit is here. Tomorrow it may go to some other. So, so this is not me. Who am I? They raise this question in the previous discussion. Who am I? They say I am a Sarumati. I am a spirit in this body of so, so, this, this so if you realize that, yeah, all your problems are solved. So spiritual evolution will come. If you will come if, if you have that So higher consciousness and moksha. Now in yoga, there are many yoga, many many methods are doing yoga. The first is if you do your duties properly, the teacher has to teach well, not just when you complete the number of hours of teaching, complete the service, but then give learning, teaching, learning, experience, like Gurukul, not just the experience of your textbook knowledge, realizing how to lead a successful, happy life, that is teacher role, not just the engineering pass, get a credit, uh, CGPA of the 8.9 or 9. It is not a teacher is how do you bring him as a successful, good human being with values and also so that he becomes a, a global citizen to take care of humanity? That is the role of teacher. So that is, if you realize each one of the scientists is to do the best, to bring the best of that, that is Karma Yoga. Do your work, but not without attachment. Oh, where well, I get, if I do this, where I get a promotion, where I get an agreement, where I get an award, fellowship, membership, and academy. So then, you are not doing that one, you are doing Priya. And you are, you are actually expecting some returns, then it becomes Priya. You should do Karma Yoga. Karma Yoga means 
do that action without expecting the full self But it will come one by one action to reaction. It will come to you, but then that is kind of a You do your work, duties, properly, the full attachment without expecting your turn. You know, this bhakti yoga. You go to surrender. You completely surrender to yourself, to, to the Almighty. You do your work, everything. Lead the life as if you, if I'm here today, it's a practice, not a simple here. Take your blessings for me. And also, whatever is knowledge I can give to you to give. So, it's a practice. So, if you think that I never planned that uh, I should go there or talk sometimes, I never go to so this great organization, give a lecture and meet all of you. So, this all happens. So, let's just surrender, totally surrender. Whether it is successful or not successful, it's okay. I have surrendered to the God and do what He desires. What He she desires. <laughs> so jnana yoga, then the jnana, it's not just knowledge, it's actually realization. Uh, so jnana yoga is another type of yoga. That is, you reach through the realization of the purpose of the life. In, in Tamil, no? Abhaya used to sing a song in my Karam and myself we used to sing together in the mic together. So I will give the Abdul Karam and he worked very closely, very, very closely. And we used to sit together, eat together, sing together, and also walk in the mobile gardens together. So we had this connection. So we sang one song, which is a name Go. He practices, he was practicing pranayams, he used to do some masnas, simple masnas, like Abhinav also. So that song I will sing to narrate this what is that jnana? The purpose of creation of life. Aridu aridu mani dana dana aridu Aganiyum aridu koon kurudu seviru peshidu nini pirattanu Koon kurudu seviru peshidu nini pirandhalu Jnanamum kalviyum nayatthal aridu Jnanamum kalviyum Discriminate, 
understand your values, what is good, what is not good. So that the ability also you have to be blessed with. So you have to able to seek that knowledge. But then what is expected in Dham and Tapas? That is important. You have to give, give, so that Allah means to marry it when it's been, which he also wrote to the things of fire. No, he used to be a DRD chief, my chief, no? and he was, I was director central, I was the chief controller of R&D, I was also director of the team. He appointed me as the director of two institutes, Defense Institute of Physiology and Life Sciences and Defense Institute of Psychological Research. I was together looking after as director for 11 years. Then I moved to headquarters as 10 years as the chief controller. I worked with him as well as a So in that period, uh, he mentioned one incident, give, give, give. That was one slogan by which he used to narrate an incident. Whenever we launch a missile, you know, said, we have to prepare ourselves as a new deterrent against any other country. If you are powerful, nobody will attack you. If you are weak, everybody will attack you. So the power, to become a powerful body, we never be capable of it. Not to have hyperbolic uh, tendencies or approach, not to, be, to protect our country because if our neighborhood has got nuclear capability, if we don't have, all of us will be afraid if they put a nuclear bomb on the other If we have a threat, if we have a deterrent, they will not attack. Because if they attack, we will be attacked. So we signed a self moratorium of no first choose. So that Khan, during the design launch, you to take the blessings of Shakrata. He used to come all the way to take the blessings of Lord Shakrachari. And then he was still with him. So, wherever Shakrachari, he doesn't sleep much, he will sleep little, only he will take the blessings and talk to him. So, when Dr. Ram was sitting, a very rich, a rich man, disciple of Shakrachari came there with the Namaskar, and then he blessed Swamiji. Asked him if okay. He said, Yes, Swamiji, you have blessed me with a rich wealth and a business studying billions abroad and in India. I have a daughter, I have a son who is in the US and Canada. And so, so then he says, Are you happy? <laughs> and the tears roll in the eyes of that disciple. He cries, leaves. He said, You have made me love everything. Why did you, 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 you don't have? Yes. People come to me, they are rich, they can get something from me, and uh, so my daughter reads once a week and talks. My son talks uh, after uh, one, one month, once, once a month. So there are no people really know me. They really, I, I feel that that deprivation, that happiness, I feel, people are not really showing their love. He said, what, what should I do so? And he says, only one show that. <laughs> so what it means, we have to give one thing, not to expect anything to get back. You know, we all the time give to get something more. And in our son, I feel that uh, when he becomes more, he will be there. It doesn't happen, that happens. So we expect, and we tell our wife, oh, that that very sambal was very tasty. Sukhshashari and Kharmishari. 
the existence is in three levels. Similarly, heart rate variation is, is, is an aroused, alert, active state. You know, you do meditation, no? it is, it is, it's not only docile and you know, completely sleep. It's actually you are getting into an alert mind. The next thing we, have, we found, see, normal people like us, we don't need to be, we are not going to be athletes, or we are not going to be athletes, and we are going to be athletes. So we need routine, yes sir, we should be able to come to our workplace, we have to be able to climb the staircase, we have to do some exercise, so you need that kind of some maximum level of physical efficiency. This is what is achieved by yoga, but if that is yoga, it's not going to go make him a marathon runner, or going to be a sprinter, but it's going to make you at some maximum level of exercise your efficiency goes up. This is what is shown in our treadmill as well as bicep layer of the Before and after yoga interventions, uh, uh, you were able to see their physical efficiency goes up. Particularly, your lactic acid build up. So that is the one which gives you the onset of aging. When you have the lactic acid, pyruvic acid going up because you have anaerobic metabolism taking over from your aerobic level. When you do these exercises physically for a long time, from the aerobic, it becomes anaerobic. So all your metabolic processes is supplying the energy in absence of oxygen. So thereby in the process, you have glycolytic processes, anaerobic processes, leading to acid metabolic building up, like lactic acid, pyruvic acid, all of these which in turn shifts your pH to a relative acidic side. And this is what is seen in this slide, that lactic acid builder in the, in the, in the control which is like this, in yoga before and after six months of yoga, this is what is the profile. Whereas in control, uh, the control group, this is the one, and then this is the, the after six months. There is before and after. What does it indicate? The lactic acid builder is very fast in this, whereas after practice of six months, there is a right word shift at the curve of the lactic acid builder up with time and uh, with a submaximum level of workload, you will see the right word shift. That means this point was reached somewhere here at this point of time. You are able to do the same exercise for a long time without getting into fatigue state. So when a person practices yoga, he's not discharging energy, he's not accumulating, he's breathing and supplying oxygen at aerobic level for a long time. So your accumulation of lactic acid, pyruvic acid will be slower. So thereby your efficiency goes up, your physical efficiency can do much work. No not get ready, looking at the patient, doing experiments. He's still cheerful when he comes up. Uh, you never come home like this. He'll be still cheerful because he is at the aerobic level all the time. So this is what he's saying. It shows that there is a right first shift of the lactic acid buildup thereby delaying the onset of physical energy, thereby improving your efficiency. Then we looked at all the biochemical profiles like blood glucose, cholesterol, total proteins, lactic dehydrogenase, dopamine beta hydroxide, volumine oxidase, so all this indicate, I won't go into the details of each one of them, it indicates the relative hypometabolic state. Because all this is going to increase during stress. Your glucose is going to rise during stress, and your cholesterol, again, uh, it's also reduced over a period of time. So all this indicates that it brings the right kind of homeostatic biochemical profile in simple terms. Then what we did, we put the soldiers, the control group practicing physical training, and the yoga group doing yoga exercises in prison. We put them in the uh, hot chamber and then cold chamber. This is cold chamber experiments in which four degree, uh, the temperature in that room was 10 degrees with no clothing, no, no clothing, only shorts on for the soldier. So he has to be there doing exercise, not sitting there doing exercise, sometimes in the level of exercise. Then at that time we were measuring uh, what happens to the soldiers. So we were looking at their core temperature, one is core temperature which is shown here. Yoga group maintain the higher core temperature as compared to the control group. And this is possible, even though both of them show decline, but relatively, the yoga group maintain the higher core temperature. And how it can be achieved two means. One is you conserve the heat, heat conservation, by producing cutaneous vasoconstriction. The blood vessels constrict, 
So the warm blood doesn't come to the surface, it remains within the core. So it is heat conservation through cutaneous vasoconstriction. constriction. It's one method. The other, other one would be heat production. Increase the heat production to compensate for the loss. So we were interested to know, physiologists, that we wanted to know whether this higher maintenance of core temperature was achieved by heat conservation or heat production. So we looked at the engine skin temperature, which was not different from control and yoga group. So it was, it was the same in control and yoga group. That means this maintenance of high core temperature was not achieved by heat conservation, but by heat production. And there are two methods of heat production. One is by shivering, you can produce heat. And shivering will give heat. The other is non-shivering metabolic process by which one can produce heat. So which way was these practitioners of yoga, the soldiers, achieved this capability? So when we looked at this, we found that the mentally the shivering actually started much later in yoga group, yoga group of subjects. That means, and also it was of a lower intensity, so we measured them by oxygen consumption. But when you do this, oxygen consumption goes on by shivering. And also we measured the EMGs, integrated EMG from different muscles, back and so on, which will indicate the electromyographic pattern, which will indicate the shivering when it started, what was the intensity of shivering, which will be seen by EMG. So we measured them and we found that this was achieved by non-shivering thermogenesis because shivering started much later and was after the lower magnitude. Then we went into from physical to psychological level. So we measured anxiety, depression scores, concentration level, and vigilance, and a few more. Quality of life and so on. So anxiety, both state and trait anxiety, it comes down after six months. Control at the initial three months, six months. In control, uh, this is the pattern. Depression, again, yes, this is the pattern in the control growth that the depression scores come down. Concentration increases. Vigilance scores, alertness of the mind increases. So there is a lot of psychological benefits besides the physical benefit, there is also psychological benefit. So this is on one side, the physical and mental capabilities, cognitive capabilities, goes up the practice of yoga. Uh, the practice of yoga means the way which we have done for soldiers. Then we looked at can it be a prophylactic, particular diabetes. We are worried that whether India will become a diabetes capital. We don't want that to happen. So we looked at why the yogic practice will it reduce the incidence of diabetes by improving their glucose tolerance. So we looked at the GGT in the group, in control and yoga group. You find here, this practice of yoga, this is the initial part. The fasting blood sugar level itself comes down. And then your glucose handling ability tremendously, significantly improves. So this is what you can prevent the, the uh, diabetes. So the body gets protected by this practice of yoga towards diet. Then we did curative aspects. So this is on the prophylactic curative. So we took essential hypertension, which is as one of the case, case clinical condition in which there is a tremendous the psychological factors involved. Your diet, intake of sodium, everything is positive factor for this. Angiotensin converting enzyme, renin angiotensin, all that is very, very much involved in the system, including catecholamine. So we took 40 patients, divided them randomly into two groups. One group was put on a table, tilt table, tilted 70 degree head up, head up. The patient is just by hypertensive patient. 70 degree head up, passive tilt. That means his muscle pump is not active, so there is a cooling of them in the lower parts of the body due to gravity. So this is one, one group receiving this, then 35 degree head down. So the patient has to do only lie down passively without acting his muscle pump, so lie down. And then the other group did exercise yoga asanas, which involves the posture of tilt, like for example, Ardhahanasana, Vipreeta Kali, Sarvangasana. So head down tilt. When your head is down, leg is up. Head is down, leg is up. Similarly, Bhujangas, Dhanulas, Surya Namaskar. And so many exercises, we involve this head up tilt. 
One is the down tilt, the other is the up tilt. The down tilt, the up tilt. So there are two groups. One does passive tilt, the other one is actively doing asanas, which involves a pastoral tilt. Then we measure the barrel reflex. Just one of the hypotheses is our group established. If we have the established hypertension, essential hypertension, because 90% of hypertension we have essential hypertension. The other one is organic, we have 10%. So we took essential hypertension patients, in which what we found, the first thing to be knocked down in these patients is barrel reflex. So we have in the carotid sinus, the barrel receptors, which respond to the phasic radiations in blood pressure. That means, suppose I lie down, suddenly get up, so your barrel reflex immediately senses the radiation. Because suddenly there's a point of blood in the lower parts due to gravity, venous return decreases, cardiac output decreases, systolic BP tends to fall. So this is detected by barrel reflex. We then you ask heart to pump faster. What are little pump it faster so that your pressure doesn't fall? So your perfusion is maintained. And then immediate vasoconstriction, don't allow the pooling to happen. So this is normal physiology which is activated by receptor. This goes down in the hypertensive patient. First thing to be knocked down before you set the geology of hypertension is to make this sluggish. See, a uh, uh, sentinel, Chaukida, standing guard on his work, in uh, <laughs> security, he goes to sleep, everybody can come in. So that is what does. This fellow sleeps, then you are, so you will take whatever if it is, stress, catabolomates, everything tries to establish itself. When you wake him up, you will throw everybody out. This is what we the hypothesis we need to work. Can we throw this fellow out by yoga practice? Can we reactivate this sluggish barrel reflex? That is the experiment. So when you do this like up tilt, passive tilt, or when you do this asana, what you are doing? You are acting the barrel receptors to be directed. Because when the pooling occurs here, as you the activation of barrel receptors because it dilates, so barrel receptors become active. When you do the head down tilt, you are allowing the blood to pull in the head and neck region, stretches the barrel receptors, it again activates. So what is activation? There is deactivation. Activation, deactivation. So you are making up that fellow who has gone to sleep by doing this repeated tilt. So that this chamita will throw the other factors, geological or adjunct factors. So this is what we did by the tilt experiment. And in that other group, what we found, even here, there was a significant reduction. But the results achieved with the, with the yoga group was tremendously high. This is what I showed in this study. See, this was the hypertensive. We took moderately hypertensive. We didn't take severe hypertensive. Systolic. So you see this. And this is a mean arterial pressure. When it comes down, it comes down. And uh, then, this is during tilt. So there's a sluggishness which is seen. It takes long time to correct. But then after six months of practice, you find your blood pressure itself comes down. Basic blood pressure, resting blood pressure. And then it is stable. Even when you do the tilt, it becomes stable. That means you have broken up the barrel reflex sensitivity in such a way that it corrects. Then we have turn to the other factors like any angle, class 1, RS, and now I can the same patient before and after. You see this before the, after 10 days, 12 days, even 12 days you see very significant results. Then it comes down. And also the uh, urinary catecholamine. So catecholamine level comes down. Then we also measured renin angiotensin activity, EEG. <coughs> but, I'm, but I'm just showing some illustrative slides to show what we have. The last part of my presentation is on the coronary artery disease, which is again multifactorial. Because one is sedentary living, the other one is dyslipidemia, leading to the deposition of cholesterol and all together, uh, the, the, the LDL and PLDL, all these are a problem, so that is the next part. Third is stress. So these are the three risk factors of coronary artery disease, major risk factors. So we wanted to attack to your lifestyle intervention. Stress was taken care of Raj Yoga, so by Raj Yoga meditation. We gave low fat, high fiber diet, which is 15% fat, including hidden fat. So that was the diet given to the patients. So it's a regular fiber rich diet, which was given low fat, high fiber diet. And then regular aerobic exercise, every day morning and evening walk, half an hour, half an hour walk. So this is what we gave as an intervention to those patients. So we took 524 patients, 
This was done along with the Mount Tabu Global Hospital Research Center and Dr. Uh, Dr. Satish with uh, Dr. Lindy was associated for, uh, from there. And then we had the Global Hospital Research Center and we are doing together. Dr. Kalam himself visited along with me at least five times there to see the experiments. So that shows his uh, involvement in yoga. So we gave vegetarian, uh, high fiber, as well as low fat diet, aerobic exercise, brisk walk, and stress management through meditation. And we did many parameters. I will just run through instead of loading you with information and summarize this way. Like we did EEG and uh, so all these parameters, we will have for which I will not again so go through this. Again, we looked at the lipoproteins, homocysteine, which is very important for the disease. How does it change with the practice of yoga for 24 months, two years? This, this is done for two years. We follow, including coronary angiograms, and show you some of the angiograms. Then we looked at plasma insulin and leptin, the diet we are now looking at, because that is one of the important factors for this disease. So we looked at diet and leptin, and also glucose tolerance, which I showed now as a prophylactic within this year can correct also. Then we did uh, uh, DHEA, cortisol, cortisol is a very good indicator of stress, stress hormone in addition to catecholamines, this catecholamines. Then we did plasma serotonin, the pleasant hormones, the endorphins, beta endorphins, and serotonins we also measured. This has been published in uh, uh, first Indian Heart Journal. Now we are submitting to Lancet, the larger part, the randomized trials. Then we did melatonin, again, this is a pleasant hormone which we do see by the biorhythms regulation. So we looked at them, how does it shift in terms of the amplitude, the, the macrophase of this. We looked at in the biorhythms. Then we measured the coronary angiogram. You see the control group is actually progressed from 52.6%, it became 72.45. The control, the progression of the disease. These are on conventional medical management. This is the control group received the conventional medical management. There we give conventional medical management and lifestyle interventions. So it is not substitute, it is supplementary. Then you see in the patients who received the lifestyle intervention, yoga and meditation, you see how it decreases from 7.85 into 47.0. See, actually Dean Arnish, in his experiments, where he did that in a rigorous control in terms of keeping them in the hotel, all this participation, they were given. You can't do that in a normal population. So we allow them to be there, but we involve the spouses. Suppose if the husband is coronary heart disease patient, we call this Dilwaras. We call this Dilwaras and Dilwaras. So we, we took them and then involved the spouses as a part of the system. So that the food has to be prepared by her. So if she doesn't know what is low fat in her diet, we can't succeed. So we did it in a realistic environment. And like Dean Osish did it, a very, very strict, rigorous control. So in that, he showed only Arasta progression of the disease, but we showed actual regression. So this was the first experiment in which actual regression was demonstrated through our experiment, uh, which is seen here. And again, another patient from 89% blockage, and it became 41.0. This was seen by three cardiologists independently, blinded, so that they won't know which is the control group, which is the experimental group and also see independently opinion by them. So we have angiogram, total patients were 534, and then we had two groups. Now how does it work? <coughs> how does it work? First is, everything starts with your thoughts. Good thoughts. If you have good thoughts, that is the starting point. If your thoughts are, your mind is controlled, the thoughts are okay, and everything else will follow. You have to have feelings, attitudes, emotions, and actions, ultimately leading to action, and then habits, everything will automatically follow. So your thoughts are important. This is what does this yoga meditation. When you do this, first is your mind is controlled. So mind, so it leads to that matter. Then you look at that. All this ultimately influences the trillions of cells what we have. So then you convert them into physiological, biochemical, cellular, molecular, genetic, epigenetic, 
that and the and factors ultimately lead to beneficial effect. So we gave it like what? Then we also did other conditions just to look at how does it help in, in people like uh, various conditions like sinus pain, like varicose pain, a few experiments like that, which is different. So we used, uh, then also we looked the affective functions, anxiety. <coughs> so now I'll, I'll come to conclude now. Hope, happiness, and quality of life also increase as beginner, experts. There's a significant difference in this yoga practitioner. Yoga in schools. Actually, we should build the yoga, not only at Japan age, we should go to the schools. So that when the whole personality is getting developed, when the whole body is being prepared in the adolescence, and then come to adult state, and that state we should focus so that it becomes a part of their lifestyle. So this is what is important. The efforts have been made, but then it has to reach that larger cross section. And I'm sure that India will lead so that even at the global level, it should go to the schools. This is what I think I'm showing you. Hospitals. We must have in every hospital that must be a yoga and natural health center, which should not only help the patient, but the family, the caregivers who come there, they should be exposed to yoga. So yoga should become a wave, it should become a movement, so that every look and corner, everybody does yoga. Yoga started in our country. How many of you in the class, in this particular group, does yoga? At least the uh, asanas. I'm so happy. So you are really the messengers, messiahs of yoga. Spread this, <laughs> spread this. And it will certainly reach the larger cross section. So, in a hospital, everywhere I, I wish you were centered. All India should be established a yoga center, yoga and wellness center. And it is not only for the patients, even for the common people, the families who come, they should know, oh, if I do this, will it happen? Put on posters, brochures, distribute them, and let this, let this university or university, and that's how that it be a model university where all patients, suppose coronary artery patients, you have put a, uh, a first extent, and to reach genosis to not to occur, a lifetime intervention, otherwise it's going to come again. <laughs> so you are not removed the causative factor. You have removed symptomatically a blockage which will remove any confusion and improve. But the, what it causes the neurosis is still there. So you have to approve that so that but unless you want the patient again to come to give a revenue <laughs> then but then that's not the aim of a doctor. The aim of a doctor is to treat and make him healthy and happy. So this is what our hospital should do. You know, we will still get many patients. They will come, they will come for each unit. It should become health center rather than hospital. It should, be, it should be health center rather than hospital. So let us create that in all hospitals. We must have a yoga and wellness center. And even corporates, corporates, your doctors must practice, your nurses should practice. So in the other hospitals, executives should practice. So this is how we prevent disease. So let us create a happy world and let, let this party chain take the lead role in this being a yoga center from the Gitanda Ananda Ashram is there and then we have Chikmar is there and we have uh, um, what is the other one? Arvind 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 is there so I think all this uh, Arvind Ashram is there so we have all this right and the ambience so let, let this become a uh, uh, center. Now, finding the seat. Promote and popularize yoga. Yes, yoga has become a global yes, other country. has been given the responsibility. You should realize that responsibility is just not a declaration of 21st June as yoga day. Okay, happy one, that day we meet, organize some functions, functions, and forget about it next day. That is not the purpose. That means we have a big responsibility of promoting yoga the humanity, so each one of you should realize that, should realize and then propagate that. So that is promote, popularize, and also a scientific person, science and the way of life from life on the cross section of all cross section of society, including students. Networking of yoga centers is very important. You work in silos, that is why why it is important today. We want to have a force participation benefit, mutual benefit, synergy of minds. 
So like that, you should network with each other and become a one force, Indian force to propagate this yoga. So connect with each other and promote. Networking is very important. Preparation and circulation of wide spectrum of information communication uh, materials is also very important. Training materials. The formation of international committees with representatives from active yoga centers. So we should now take a lead role to become as a global network and consortium rather than Indian. Because Master Tibur we have believed always India has believed. Not just what we now we talk about global village and so on. This existed, this existed. Master Tibur concept existed right from the origin of our country. So that is what we should realize this formation of international companies. Promote further research and understanding of beneficial effects. And uh, so it should become a global yoga game and movement. So let us create together. The tool is MOU and also with all of you. Yoga is so universal in its principles and so holistically beneficial. It is possible for any person, young or old, religious or agnostic, to embrace and enjoy the practice. This is not told by us, but told by us. Thank you very much.